Hello people, right, what to, we're going to be looking at today is how to make a parallax effect within Webflow. Now a lot of people have asked me for some introduction animations within Webflow and I think this is a great place to start because it gets you to understand that animations have a element of psychology to them and the parallax animation isn't something you can just plug and play. You need to manipulate the images and the certain layers to create the illusion that there is some form of perspective within a two-dimensional space. So if we take you over to my screen, I'm going to show you an example of this, which we should see now. And basically on a site before that I've created for a real estate company called Queen's Lane Properties, there's quite a lot of interactions and animations on this, but the animation that we're going to look at is this right here. You can tell um, by these images that there is a sort of effect that is giving a perspective to the website. You see when you're scrolling, it seems like this image is a lot further in front and the one behind and then this one's even smaller. So we're gonna create this and I'm gonna to explain to you what and how to do it. So just looking at this now, just to break this down, there's three images, okay? And we are gonna be using one image as an anchor. And what I mean by that is that this image actually here has no parallax effect or any effect on it. So you're always gonna need some form of element to anchor the animation to give the element that the screen is scrolling. So for example, this is an anchor as well, this text and these lines. So we know what the speed of the page is. Now, the closer an object is to the screen, which is this image, the faster it is going to scroll. And then the further back, it's gonna scroll more slowly. And if you have this, um, effect where one's going one way and one is going the other. So this image here is moving upwards and this image here is actually moving down. We can create a very dynamic, smooth effect. So I know that seems a little bit complicated, but what I'm gonna show you now within Webflow is gonna make a lot of sense. So obviously pull up the style guide and follow along. Now, I'm not gonna speed this up. I'm actually gonna build this as if I was building within Webflow for a client so you can see all of the steps involved to get to obviously the final result. So what we're gonna do is duplicate a section, which you can see here, the main hero wrapper. I'm gonna duplicate that hero. Now, of course, if you follow along with my tutorials, you know that we need to change this div block up here from a header to a section, which is here. Now that's gonna allow Google to crawl these pages efficiently. Now inside of this, we have a padding, a container, a padding section, and then a grid. What we wanna do is duplicate this section first and rename this. So I'm gonna call it section underscore parallax. And then the padding, keep the same. Container, keep the same. The padding section, I wanna keep the same. And then this content within here, I wanna completely remove and add a new div. So Command E, div. And then I'm gonna call this Parallax Section Wrap. Now let's have a look at this section here. So the container large needs to be there. Okay, cool. So we've got the section wrap here and I am just gonna apply a vertical flex box on this. It's not really gonna matter for this because we're gonna be using a lot of absolute elements, but this will just help at the beginning. Now I'm gonna add in some text. Let's add in a H2 and let's call this, let's just put in some random text. How to make a parallax effect within Webflow. And then I just wanna make this max width. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller just so that it's on two lines. Now, obviously all of these combo classes that I'm using are in the style guide. It follows the fit, uh, F in suite uh, conventions. So this is how I'm doing this so quickly. Now within this section, let's actually give the hero a different color section so we know what we're looking at when we're going in between sections. Okay, so we've got a hero there, and then we've got a section one here. So within this, we want three elements, like I said. So we've got one anchor already, which is the text, which is gonna be just on the page, static. Now we wanna add in an image block. So we're gonna call this, and we've got the image in there. Now again, naming this, we're gonna call this parallax underscore image. And then just so that I can see what we're doing on the screen, I'm gonna give this a 25 rem width, 25 rem height. I'm gonna do that for the minimum width as well so it doesn't squish any point, 25 rem. Now again, using rems because this is uh, best for accessibility practices. And if you see me typing in like 100 pixels, 
and then it quickly going to Remix because I'm using a plugin called uh, Timothy Rick's Pixel to Rem Converter, which is really handy. Right, there we go. Right, so I've got one image here called Parallax Image. Now we want three, of course. So I'm going to duplicate that, duplicate it again. I'm going to call this one number is two. Now, is always means it's a combo class that is affecting one element. So that's it's just a naming convention. Normally, we use a double dash, but I like to keep things clean within Webflow. So I'll just keep it with a single dash. Now, let's add in some images so that we know what these are looking like. Now, I've just gone onto a website called Unsplashed and got free images. But what we want to do, and this is a top tip, you want to go to Tiny T PNG. Obviously, you want to scale these images properly before doing this let's actually move these files out the way so that we know what we're looking at okay so i've got these three images here they're like desert images and this is just a quick way oh no because they're too big we can't we can't optimize them so what we're going to do is i'm going to go into my legacy design uh landing page clonable file which um, is open access to you guys and I'm going to pull them in to Figma and export them at, say, a size of 1080 by 1080 pixels. This just ensures that we are going to be getting a optimized image. So let's actually do this. Here we go. Right, I'm pulling these images in here. They're just adding images down at the bottom. Right, you can see you've got three images here. Now, these are absolutely huge. So I'm just going to, within Figma, draw a rectangle, make this 1080 pixels by 1080. And I'm going to duplicate two more of these let's grab this image here and i'm going to pop that in there so we've got one let's actually move that a little bit down i'm being a little bit finicky now but i want this to look quite nice and i'm going to take this one put that in that box and then this one here and put that in here and let's actually make this one a little bit bigger we've got some variations in the images okay they look pretty cool right i'm going to get rid of these and then i'm just going to export these images so these are 1080 by 1080 but obviously if you're designing the website properly uh, you'll have the exact size because you would have set up the landing page properly so but i just want a high quality image so i'm just going to export all of these actually top tip because i have micro movements in you want to get rid of all of these decimal points afterwards sometimes Figma does a weird thing where it exports a weird white line. So you're learning top tricks there. Right, let's export these and I'm just going to name these in a new folder Parallax Images. Create that, save that. Right, let's come back to Tiny PNG. Now we can refresh this page and I'm going to drop these in here. See, much smaller now. And just because I don't want my computer to slow down, I'm going to close a certain tabs there we go close that down with spotify right there we go look it's already compressed it from 800 to 120 pixels let's download all of these now again another thing you want to do is rename your files so that you're getting that seo boost it's very very technical right now but you you can set it up however you want look legacy design agency website parallax dash zero and it's going to name these just so that it all of the images always have my name in there and if you're pushing it into google it's just going to help right so let's go back to webflow now we want to add the images so let's pull all of these images in where's my parallax folder there we go oh no we need the tiny fied one here we go let's pull these all in now second step i like to do when i get into here is i actually like to expand this and then tick all of these images that i'm using and then compress them and that's just going to change within webflow these jpegs to webpg and this will speed up your site as well another little tip that you can now we can check let's just replace all of these images there's one, there's two, and here is number three. So I think number three we're going to use as a anchor. So you can see parallax, I've selected parallax image is free. So what I'm going to do, all of them, because I've used combo classes, I can select the first one and it's going to affect all. I'm going to make all of these absolute. Now, what I need to do is create the parallax section at least, just so it gives me some room, like 100 viewport height. But let's actually do this to 150. And then what I'm going to do is for the first image, that is going to be the second slowest. So that's going to be the, its second in behind. I want that to be number two. And then the middle image, I want to be in front of everything. So I'll put that as three. And then the anchor image, number three, I want that number one. Right. 
right at the bottom. So I'm going to anchor absolute that. I'm going to make the middle, the one in the middle, 25% into the center and then 25% from the top. Here we go. 25 rem, 25 rem. Oh, that's why I was a bit confused. We need to get the section wrap and I actually need to make this relative so that all of the absolute images are going to stick to this. So the middle image, which is this one here, I want this 25% into the center and then I want it 25% from the top. So it's just kind of overlapping. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that it shows that this is an image that is further in front, closer to us. And then this one here, I'm gonna make a little bit smaller cause this is the furthest one away. I'm gonna make this 15 rems all around. Right, okay. Let's actually change this parallax section to say 100 rem, put it a little bit more down, 80, maybe that'll work, 60. Let's try, let's try 80. And then instead of percentages, I'm actually gonna use 25, yeah, 35. I'm gonna use rems to set in from the side. So 15 from the left and then 20 rem from the top. Now let's add a little bit of padding to the bottom of this. So I'm gonna wrap that in a div block. I'm gonna put pad bot and then it's gonna have padding bottom. And then I'm gonna make the padding extra, uh, extra, extra large. There we go, we've got some space here. Okay, so we've got the basic setup of where the images are gonna be. Okay, so now what we want to do is select the parallax section wrap. This is where the animation is going to work. So actually, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. 70. Yeah, I think 70. Let's actually make this image 20 rems. So just is at the background of it. Now, actually, I want to add a little bit of a shadow to this one here and make it a little bit bigger. 40 and this one about 28 as well. This has got like a power. Shows that it's a little bit bigger than the top bottom right. Right, I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow to this. Box shadow, just pure black. Let's keep it at 25. And then let's see what we can play around with. So distant, let's blur it 20. Let's make it 10 pixels. And then let's actually turn this down to about 10. Just a very subtle, like I said, you wanna use everything very subtle. Okay, now with the section selected, which you can see here, which is containing all of the, um, the elements. So we've got the text with its padding wrap and then we've got the three images we want to select the section wrap we're going to go to element triggers and then while scrolling in view so we start an interaction here play scroll animation and then zero percent when it starts entering so what this means is when this top of this blue box the parallax section wrap enters the screen so this would be like we've already entered so it's, this starts playing at 0%. So I can't scroll any high, but this would start playing as soon as it come in. And it's gonna end playing when it's 100% fully invisible. So this just means that the interaction is gonna be playing from start to finish. We're gonna be able to see everything. So it's actually, you can play around with all of this, but we don't want to, this is already set up well. So what we wanna do is, where is the, here we go. So scroll animation, this little plus sign. And we're gonna call this parallax scroll capitalize these i like to just make things nice and clean scroll and then i like to use brackets and then i'd normally explain within the brackets say what type of animation it is so this is a scroll whilst scrolling there we go right like i said image number one we're going to put in here so we're going to put a move here and then we're going to let's say that that starts off at minus 10 rem then it ends at 10 rem. Here we go. So if we play this, when we're scrolling, you see that? It's slowly moving up. Now we want this second, uh, well, the image that is second behind to have a movement of something slower. So maybe we'll use five, we might play with this. And instead of it minus, we have it, oh, that was the wrong one. Instead of minus, we have it as normal so that it's opposite it's moving the opposite way, if you get what I mean. So let's move this the opposite. So minus five rem. Now let's play this. Maybe we need to add a little bit more movement to this just to ensure that parallax image, here we go, is zero two minus 10. Ah, of course. So that is because I have selected, I've got to select this, change this, because I've got the all of them selected, as you can see here, the class parallax image, and we select the second one I've got is 02. So it's stopping the movement. So for this one, just a quick workaround, instead of saying only children with this class, sorry, affect class, we just go to selected elements. So instead of affecting everything, it's only gonna affect uh, that one block. So if we go back to the parallax, you can see that we're having a much smoother effect. 
And then look, if we come into the viewport here, this is working much more nicely. Now, of course you can play around, you can move elements around to have this effect a certain way. We could actually have this image. Let's let's try something else. Let's actually make this image really small. Palette number three, because I think this is gonna look good. We're gonna make that 15 rems. And we're actually gonna bring it all the way in front and we're gonna speed it, uh, speed it right up, make it the fastest. So we, everything else is up to three. So we wanna put this as three. I'm gonna select the interaction wrapper here. And then with an interaction, I'm gonna go back into this, select this image, and then I'm gonna have move. And we've got, let's say minus 20 rem, and then let's say 20 rem. So this is gonna be moving faster. Let's actually put this to zero, see what that does. Nope, not liking that. Parallax image, so that's number three. This is zero rem. There we go, it's because I have it. Oh, we need to put this, because I had it set on ta tablet. Let me look, see, because I accidentally pushed a key, I think I've affected things in tablet, yeah, I have. So this always happens to me, it's an annoying thing, but uh, let's just remove the classes in tablet. You can see here, I can hold down option key and then just click the blue effects. Now I wanna go back to desktop and make sure that we're only affecting desktop viewport, which I'm doing now. And then let's put that as number three. There we go, all fixed. And then let's go back to the interaction and check it out, see what it looks like. Yeah, so I wanted the top one to go even faster. So here we go, you see this? So this top one is go moving even faster. And to be fair, I think we can make this go even faster. And it's, see, see what I mean? That it's not really a plug and play thing. It's something that you need to visually, visually affect yourself so that you know that it looks good. Yeah, so I think that looks that looks nice. It's moving faster than the one at the back. And even I would add a shadow to this as well, just to make it even even more obvious that it is in front of everything else. So we're gonna put a 20% blur and then 10% width. Okay, so let's have a let's have a little look at that. So scrolling down. And you can see, look, this one's a lot further in front, so it's moving more forward. And then that one at the back, it's moving more slowly. And we've got an opposite. So you can see that this is working nice because the main one in the middle is moving opposite to the two either side of it. So that is one way to make your parallaxes look a lot better is to have a an opposite direction between the elements. You don't want everything going the same way, otherwise it's not gonna have the same effect. Again, just to review that uh, the further in front an element is, so this one here, the faster it is. So this is moving, uh, I think 30 rems, so that's speeding up. This is moving 20 rems and this is only moving 10 rems. So everything is, uh, it's getting slower as the Z index goes backwards, if that makes sense. Okay, people, so that is a overview of how to create a parallax effect. Now, if you're interested in learning more animations or you have any questions, just drop a um, comment below. Of course, you can join the Facebook community group where you can ask me directly and join uh, the other Webflow pros in creating animations. We have competitions um, coming up. So if you would like to get a hand in that, just drop us a message and uh, obviously join the group. Now, a course is coming out very soon, so do be aware that there will be a subscribe newsletter, which will be uh, detailing a competition where people will be getting the course for free. So do be sure to join the group for that as well and subscribe to the newsletter. Thank you for your time, and I hope to speak to you guys soon.